let's go on to the fun topic of money. So as we all know, London is expensive. It can be quite lonely slash isolating. I probably visited my friends at other universities every other week. Next thing that I'd recommend to really get that community feel that is so lacking in London is to Hi everyone, it's Darren here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. So as you can see with the title, I'm gonna be talking all about university in London for today's video. Just for anyone that's new, I'm born and bred in London, did my undergraduate here, currently on my gap year here, and I'm doing my masters in broadcast journalism at City University next year. So I'm glad to say that I'm suitably equipped to film this video, and I just figured that I would share some of my top pieces of advice and tips for you guys. If you are studying in London because I do feel like the experience is so unique in comparison to other universities so if you are going to university in London this video is for you and definitely make sure to stay to the end so that you can get all of the tips so yeah I'm just gonna jump straight into today's video with the first topic about what exactly is different about the university in London experience but so I would say that the biggest difference between university in London and other unis is that there aren't really campuses in London and so as a result you don't really get that university feel that you may get going to the university of Nottingham for example or another campus university I don't know why I just singled out Nottingham University um it's a lot more independent and a lot of it feels like you're not actually going to university but you're kind of just like attending classes in this random building so I'd say that the positives of this is that you feel super mature and like you're just kind of doing your own thing but I'd say the negative with that is that it can be quite lonely slash isolating and a lot of my friends who I've spoken to can agree on this and when we actually had this conversation I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that because because we're not on campus, everyone kind of lives in different areas. So if you do end up making really great friends in your course, it can sometimes be difficult to actually make plans with them and frequently see them because one person in your friendship group may live in North London, the other may live in East, South, West. Wow, that was just like incorrect coordination. Can you tell that I went to fashion school? So I think, yeah, the logistics of it definitely plays a big part because you're not all going home together versus if you were living in a campus uni. There's loads of different ways that the experience is interesting, but there are definitely ways to combat it, which leads me on my next topic of how you can avoid feeling the negatives of the university in London experience. So I'd say number one, my best piece of advice, and I've said this in so many videos, is to really try and make an effort to make friends with people in your halls of residence. I think this is probably the biggest key to like avoiding this isolating feeling Feeling, especially if your friends on your course do live in like different places across the city so obviously if you're living in a shared flat then you have your flatmates who even if you feel like you don't necessarily click with them when you first meet them I'd still encourage you to just make an effort to see if you can form a friendship there because it will honestly like be the best thing ever to like have a friend that you live with if for whatever reason you don't get on with your flatmates or you live in a studio then I definitely encourage you to be friendly around halls of residence and see if you can make friends there so that you kind of have a nice balance between your friends who you're living with, your friends who are on your course, your friends who are at your job. I think it's so key to have that balance. The next thing that I'd recommend to really get that community feel that is so lacking in London is to join societies. As we all know, universities have societies, which are basically like clubs, so there's sports societies, there's, there's literally everything. I mean, my friend is literally part of the Homo Society. Yeah, join societies, that's also a way to like expand the amount of people that you know and that you're friends with. And it's just a great way for you to kind of have that community feeling obviously easier said than done right now because of everything which is going on with the pandemic but if you can I'd also actually advise getting a job if you have free time and you are feeling lonely get a job it's a great way again to kind of like be around people make new friends meet new people and on top of that you're obviously getting paid and then the final thing that I have written down is probably what I did the most and that is visiting friends at campus universities I probably visited my friends at other universities every other week and it was such like a fundamental part of my mind because it was so good to just be able to like have my life in London and then when I wanted to go out and go to like student unions and go to all of these fun events I get on the train for a couple of hours and go down to meet my friends so yeah I'd say that those are probably the biggest four things that I would encourage you guys to implement into your routine if you're going to university in London now let's go on to the fun topic of money so as we all know London is expensive well, actually that being said I never really understood what everyone was talking about because obviously I'm born and bred here but the more I used to visit my friends at universities outside of London, the more I was like, hmm. <laughs> 
Why am I paying 18 pounds for a drink at the club and they're paying like one pound, you know? That being said, there are definitely some great ways that you can get around that and save some money here and there as well as make some money. On that note, I'm really excited to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by Vendi, an app which is a marketplace to buy and sell phones safely. If you guys are looking to get some extra cash to help you through your university and London experience, strongly recommend Vendi. I don't know about you guys, but when I get a new phone, I just keep my old phone. I don't really know why. And as a result, I just kind of have phones lying around and selling your phones is such an easy way to make money. So yeah, if that's you and you're looking to have a bit more cash to enjoy the university and London experience, then you can head over to Vendi and use their app. On that note, if you're looking to save some money and you wanna get a new phone, then you can also use the marketplace to actually buy a phone. They're typically 30% cheaper than buying phones from retailers. On top of that, they verify every purchase to make sure that it's not a scam. And what's really great for students is that they offer payment in installments so that you can split the cost of the phone through Klarna. So they're very flexible, very reliable, and I just think that if you are looking for ways to either make or save money, I'd strongly recommend to check out Vendi. I'll pop the link to download the app at the top of the description box. It's completely free. Now onto some other great ways to save money. One of the biggest ones that you can probably do is get a student Oyster card. Student Oyster card is so essential, especially if you are traveling a lot. I believe it gives you 30% off travel, but I may be wrong. This makes traveling in London a lot cheaper than if you were to use your contact list. To purchase one, however, it does cost money. It's 30 pounds. I'll pop the link to get one in the description box down below though as it's such an essential. The next way that you can save money, especially if you're visiting your friends, is to get a rail card. A rail card just makes traveling across the UK a lot cheaper. I've literally gone to visit my brother at the University of Warwick for like four pounds once using a rail card, which is insane. And fun little fact, if you link your rail card to your student Oyster card, it gives you even more discounts. So I think if we're gonna do one thing from this video, it's going to get those rail cards and Oyster cards. Student discount is also something that I strongly encourage you guys to check before purchasing anything whilst you're a student in London. You'd be surprised how many things you can get a student discount on. It's the typical clothing and shoes, but you can also get it on food, things like coffee, literally so many different things, even like electronics. Even if it isn't student discount, just see if there are any other discount codes because every penny counts whilst you're a student. So I truly encourage you to look at those discount codes. Loyalty cards are also a great way to make savings and get rewarded for spending. So if your hall's residence is located by Tesco, go downstairs, get a club card and start to get points every time you shop because trust me they will add up especially when you're living there for a year and that's like the sole place that you shop the same goes with your local coffee shops and cafes and my best piece of advice honestly is to set it up as soon as you move in otherwise you're just not going to do it trust me like i said to my dad that i do it in my first week and it just never happened so don't be me finesse <laughs> now let's talk about nights out in london i have had so many questions from you guys asking me about nights out especially after i filmed my video i think it was like two years ago now and i still get dms but i filmed like a pros and cons of university in london video and spoke about promoters um so let's get into that so if we're to split up london nights out into categories there's like bars mayfair slash bougie clubbing um events and then just like pubs i guess so yeah long story short in london there are a bunch of different clubs in mayfair which is like a really nice area um and some of these tables at the clubs go for like one thousand pounds some go for five thousand pounds so yeah i remember when i first went to uni and people who work from london were hearing about these they were obviously shook because who is paying five thousand pounds for a night out so long story short if you're going clubbing in mayfair and don't want to pay that much for a table you simply just get a promoter and then when you go on their table at the very most you'll pay 20 pounds for entry but if you get that early it should be free and you literally get to enjoy the benefits of being on a table and having free drinks all night it sounds so weird now that i'm actually explaining it but the promoter is basically getting paid for bringing people into the club so that's how the whole system works my best piece of advice on how to get a promoter is to honestly ask your friends that are constantly clubbing who they use it's always better to go off a personal recommendation loads of people ask me for my promoter guys i literally haven't gone mayfair clubbing in like two years my promoters moved back to paris i do not have one so I'm so sorry for the people that DM me. Yeah, if you don't know a single person, I'd encourage you to go to like the location type thing on Instagram, type in a club that you're interested in and like see people that have posted pictures at the club and then scroll through their comments because usually a promoter will be commenting like, hey, like come and join me for your next night out and like then you just DM them. In terms of Mayfair club recommendations, I'd say Suck is definitely one to go to. I'm sure you guys have seen it on Instagram. It's the one where lots of crazy things are happening. There's like a ball pit there are clowns it's lit tape is also a very good club toy room even though i haven't been there since my 18th birthday i've heard maddox is really good so 
yeah those are the clubs that i'd recommend and not really recommend if you're interested in like techno music i'd encourage fabric xoyo bussy building corsica studios corsica is a bit intense though so like do as you will with that information and moving on to my personal favorite night out in london that is events i personally love going to events because you can go wearing pretty much whatever you want i just prefer the vibes and how everyone's just kind of like doing their own thing every time i go to events i always get questions asking how i like got invited or like how i'm there honestly like 90 percent of the events i go to anyone can attend they're just events hosted by brands and they literally just like put our rsvp form on their instagram and then i just sign it before the guest list closes and it's really as simple as that but my best piece of advice to you guys if you're looking to go for like brand events is to just follow and engage with the brands that you really like because they're always doing events and then onto the final night out in london as i said pubs sometimes you just want to go to a pub you know the great thing with pubs is like you always kind of know what you're gonna get so there's no place in particular that like you really have to go you can kind of just go wherever you are depending on what area you're in but as you guys will soon find out there is a pub called weatherspoon that like every student loves because it's it's so cheap and yeah that's pretty much it it's just really cheap and then on to the final topic of today's video that i'd like to cover it's all about jobs and internships because i do believe that if you are in a city like london i definitely encourage you to intern or work at some point just because i feel like it's part of the whole experience you know people who ask me how to get jobs or internships in the city looking at the jobs that i've done throughout uni i'd say the biggest contributor which allowed me to get those jobs was actually applying through my university's jobs board this university should have like a website where uh, recruiters are literally targeting your university and I think this is the easiest way to get a job because you're competing with just other people in your university as opposed to like the general public so if your university does have that I definitely encourage you to just apply 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 second way which I personally got on jobs and I'd say like most of my friends have it's honestly through networking there are so many opportunities to network in the city whether it's your university events or external events um, I've worked with Bright's Network in the past if anyone doesn't know they're like a company that hosts so many different events have so many different job opportunities and internships and so if you guys don't know about them definitely check them out it's such a great way to meet recruiters network and just really get a good foot in the door it's gonna sound a bit random and again probably more fashion specific but i network a lot at parties like you'd be surprised how many opportunities can come from literally meeting someone at like a bar so go out you know on the terms of going out i guess my final topic is in london you're in a huge city surrounded with so many different people and so many different opportunities that one of my strongest recommendations is to really just go out and make the most of it say yes to opportunities which come your way and just see where they take you try and just make the most of the experience because it really is such a unique one and i do feel like the fast-paced nature of it can make it go super quickly like the fact that my three years are over is actually kind of scary so make the most of it have fun and enjoy yourselves and i guess on that note that is the end of today's video so yeah that is the end of today's video where i have shared with you guys my top tips to survive university in london and make the most out of the experience if you enjoyed watching today's video i'd love if you could let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and if you were any viewer today i'd love if you could hit the subscribe button down below I upload new videos every saturday and wednesday and i'm actually really excited to announce that i'm launching a london city guide kind of series on my channel i show you guys my favorite spots in the city favorite places to go for dates favorite rooftop bars all of that stuff um and i'm really looking forward to sharing that with you so if you are going to uni in london make sure that your post notifications are on so that when that launches you're the first to know but yeah that is all from me for today i look forward to seeing you all in my next video and thank you so much once again for watching bye